local news. Eyewitness News, more local in the morning, starts now. And good morning, bright and early at 7 o'clock. I'm Matt Rodewald. And I'm Candace King. Thanks for joining us this morning. A little cloudy, but mild. Oh, you could be busy later today. Hey, you know, it could get a little bit. And it probably will for some mm -hmm. uh, this afternoon as far as the weather goes. This morning, not so much. We've got the clouds out there. A few showers uh, actually weakening a bit as they move out of northeastern Iowa and into Wisconsin. So we're really not going to deal too much as far as any severe weather for today. But you notice those clouds, they're thickening, thickening up quite a bit as we head through this morning. Morning. Now, cloud cover today is going to play a big impact on just where we get thunderstorms to form later this afternoon. 71 in Rockford already, 72 in Freeport, Janesville, 70 in Savannah, and 72 degrees right now in Sterling. We're on our way to rise into the low to mid 80s this afternoon. There's a warm front just to the south of us. As that front begins to lift north, that's when the threat for storms will increase as we head later into today. So we'll go into complete detail, a complete breakdown of that forecast for you and let you know just what you can expect because some of those thunderstorms could be strong to severe. I've got your full forecast that's coming up in just a little bit. Matt? All right, Candace, thank you very much. A suspect shot and killed by police in broad daylight right in the middle of downtown Beloit. Investigators worked into the night to sort out what exactly happened. Eyewitness News reporter Matt Mershon was first on the scene and he has more. A family member and loved ones find out their loved one was killed right in the middle of the street. The police killed him. And that was confirmed by police. Shots were fired by the officers. Uh, the suspect uh, unfortunately did not survive. The suspect believed to be Darius Baptiste Lowry was wanted on a felony parole violation. They observed him leave uh, a residence in the 1100 block of 5th Street in a vehicle. They uh, were preparing to make or attempting to make a traffic stop. And they did on Grand Avenue. When police ordered the suspect to stop the car, he attempted to run over the officer, so they fired shots. This is my baby daddy. Never gonna see your daddy again. A gun and blood lay on the ground next to the car, but police won't confirm if the man was armed. Two officers shot the suspect. They're now on administrative leave. It's gonna be several hours here at the scene um, for DCI to conduct the uh, preliminary investigation here at the scene. And DCI, the Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigations, is continuing to investigate the fatal shooting at this time. Meanwhile, the names of two other victims in the deadly Marathon gas station shooting have been released. 41-year-old William T. Blau and 23-year-old Michelle Gentry were both shot and injured after an argument in the parking lot Sunday night. Police are still investigating the incident. It included the murder of 34-year-old Joseph Henson. If you have any information, you are asked to contact Crime Stoppers. A Janesville teacher was supposed to be watching her fourth grade class on a field trip. Instead, she passed out after drinking too much alcohol. The incident happened late last week. 50-year-old Maria Kaya's blood alcohol level was more than three times the legal limit. Police say she started drinking at 6 a.m., but no criminal charges had been filed against Kaya. Since there were other adult chaperones there, police say the students were never in immediate danger. A Philadelphia couple is suing the federal government for $3 billion over its surveillance program. Marianne and Charles Strange say they've been targeted for electronic surveillance because of their criticism of the U.S. military. And they are the parents of a Navy SEAL killed in 2011 in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan. The couple says their phone records were illegally accessed by domestic spy agencies, President Obama and Attorney General Eric Holder, and National Security Agency Director Keith Alexander are among those listed in the suit. This is believed to be the first civil lawsuit against the Obama administration since their surveillance program was leaked to the public. Blackhawks talk dominating everything today. Game one tonight. Very Everyone's fair. ready to go. Very fair. I know our sports department is ready to go. Absolutely. Fans are ready to go. So yeah, game one of the Stanley Cup Finals is tonight. Blackhawks, Bruins, United Center. Our own Scott Lever was at Media Day on Tuesday and has a preview. They're two teams with a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum. The Blackhawks won seven of their last eight playoff games. The Bruins have won nine of their last ten. They're playing well. They're on a big roll right now, and they've got a lot of options. You know, they got uh, they check well. They're a very patient team, and they're positionally strong in all zones, and uh, you know, they've got some guys that can make plays. The Bruins have 17 players back from the team that won the Stanley Cup two years ago. 
So right there, it shows a lot of uh, experience they've had. They have, and uh, the, we know they're a great team uh, defensively. Uh, and we've seen what they were able to do in playoffs so far. Now, these teams didn't see each other at all during the regular season because of the lockout. But the Bruins' physical play in their four-game sweep at the Penguins certainly got the Blackhawks' attention. You know, they're great defensively, offensively. You know, they have you know big bodies. They play physical, and they also have speed. You know, I'm sure. Their confidence is flying high after that series, but they realize that it doesn't mean anything now that that uh, poor different team. What a historic matchup this is. These two franchises over the years have combined to win 10 Stanley Cup championships, two in the last four years alone. Do you players feel some of that excitement that the fans feel over the matchup of these two historic teams? Yeah, certainly. I think they're, uh, you know, it is, it is a cool matchup between all six teams and, and two big uh, sports cities in general. I think the fans are going to get uh, engaged and, and uh, I'm sure it'll be pretty crazy in both Boston and Chicago during the game. Well, we're all excited to play in this. Uh, it's going to be a fun time, so uh, everyone's positive. In Chicago, Scott Lubber, Eyewitness News. 7 o'clock tonight, get ready Hawks fans. Cubs, they lose at home to the Reds 12-2 and the White Sox, they fall in extra innings to the Blue Jays and the Spurs Take a 2-1 series lead in the NBA Finals. They trounce the Heat 113-77. Game 4 is Thursday night. And I was just telling you, Matt, that people are always making the LeBron and Drake right. comparisons. LeBron hasn't scored 20 points in the Finals. Michael never scored less than 20 in the <laughs> Finals. So early, uh, early stuff thinking about that. He Hey, he's a different player, although he's, put been, him there. he's been a, a disappearing player yes, the last. Best player in the league, <laughs> hands down right now. All right, Ben, thank you very much. Coming up next here on Eyewitness News, calling all dads. Father's Day right around the corner, and there's Candace. She's right around our corner, too. Hi, Candace. Hi, yeah, we are going to be tracking, uh, unfortunately, maybe a few showers and thunderstorms for the weekend for Father's Day, but we have to get there first. We have to get through today. We've got thunderstorms on the docket for this afternoon. We'll talk more on that coming up. Stay right here.